Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you so much for returning to another video. Today, we are here to do the Jan Uary book tag. So this tag was originally created by Jan over at Jan Agaton. I originally discovered her channel and this tag last year, and so I decided to go ahead and make it a beginning of the year tradition. As you can probably tell, all of the end of year slash beginning of the year content is coming out, and this is absolutely my favorite time for creating and watching booktube content. So I hope that you'll enjoy. If there is any end of year slash beginning of the year content you typically like to see from creators, please comment down below and let me know, and I will see if I can make that happen if it wasn't already on my scheduled list of content that I have coming out for January. So without further ado, do, let's go ahead and get into the tag. Question number one, what was the last and first book you read in 2023? Yes, I vividly remember the very first book that I read in 2023 because that was The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. And I remember because I had such high expectations for this one, especially after reading In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife and Loving It and then hearing such rave reviews about this. I had hyped this book up so much and that combined with like the pressure of picking the first book of the year, I felt really kind of hindered my enjoyment of this one. I think had I made this maybe my second or third book of the year, I might have enjoyed it a little bit more, but I do think that the pressure kind of got to me and I didn't love this one as much as I thought that I was going to, but this was the first book that I read in 2023. And the very last book that I read in 2023 was Hostage by Claire McIntosh. I wanted to make this the last book of the year for no special reason other than the fact that it was recently sent to me and I didn't want it to be added to my physical TBR numbers going into 2024 because I just recently did a video about all of the books of my physical TBR and I didn't want this to be added to it. So I made the conscious decision to make this the very last book of 2023. Question number two, what is your first read of this year? And I'm trying to kind of prevent a repeat of The Last Housewife. I haven't officially selected my very first book of 2024, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the viewer recommendations that I pulled from my challenge cup when I made my TBR because I really don't have any expectations for those books. Some of them I had never even heard of before making that TBR video and I had no idea what they were about. And so I think if I start the year with one of those, even if I don't end up liking the book, it's not going to be as disappointing to me as if I had selected a highly anticipated read to start the year with. So, so far I'm considering one of two options. I'm considering Last One at the Party by Bethany Clift. This is a science fiction dystopian that I had never heard of before and dystopian is definitely outside of my comfort zone. So I thought why not just bite the bullet and get the year started with a book that I might normally have never read before. And if I love it, great. And if I don't, that's fine. Like I said, I have no expectations for it. I'm also kind of eyeing this book called Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach because this is set during Arthurian times and that is definitely a time period way outside my comfort zone. I don't think I've actually ever read a book set during Arthurian and Merlin times, but the premise of it sounds very, very interesting to me. And so I'm considering one of those two books as the top contender for the very first read in 2024. Question number three, share three of your reading goals for this year. So I actually made a video during Bookmas all about my reading and channel goals for 2024. So I will try to remember to leave that linked down below for you to go ahead and check it out if you're interested. But three that I can think of off the top of my head that are pretty important to me is the Reading Like My Subscribers Challenge that's obviously a very top priority in 2024 and I already have a handful of books that I'm reading for that project in January so so far it's going to be off to a roaring start. Two, I definitely want to cut down my physical TBR. I already have a very small physical TBR. I have when I made that video I think it was like 69 or 70 books on my physical TBR which is definitely a fraction of the books that I know a lot of people have on their physical TBR but I want it down even lower because what I've come to realize is I don't need to own all of the books that I want to read. I can have the books that I want to read on a virtual list somewhere and I don't have to spend money on them until I'm ready to read them. And in fact, because I listen to most of the books that I consume anyway, the best way to go about this would be to listen to the books first and then buy them only if I've loved them. And I've been pretty good about doing that within the last year or so. And I want to continue that in 2024. So I really don't need to physically own all of the books that I want to read. I can have that list somewhere handy that I can reference whenever I need to, and then only buy them when absolutely necessary. Or maybe if there's like a special edition coming out that I want to grab before I actually read it. So I really want my physical TBR to be almost practically nothing thing because I don't want them sitting on my shelves languishing and potentially losing interest in them. So that is still a big goal of mine for 2024. And then another big goal is of course to read books as they come in. I think my percentage of doing so in 2023 was about 71% and I would really really like to increase that in 2024. I would like to hit at least like 85% of reading all of the books that I bring into my home. Fantasy books are always going to skew that number and make it impossible for me to reach 100 just because those are books that I need to sit down and physically read with my eyeballs and I have very limited 
limited time to do that. So I can only read a handful of chunky fantasies in the year. But since I do subscribe to Fairy Lou, there's at least 12 of those going to be coming into me. Whether or not I decide to read them or not is a completely different story. But I have to assume that I'm going to want to read them all. Plus any of the other sequels and stuff that are coming out in 2024 that I'm going to want to grab. So I have to keep all of that in mind. And those are definitely going to increase my physical TBR. So I'm not going to be able to read those as quickly when they come in. So I'm going to really have to focus on reading everything else as it comes into me. Okay, I just had to get up and close my blinds because the sun was doing the most. So I'm going to try to make the previous footage in this video a little bit less bright. I always try to have my blinds open so I can have as much natural lighting as I can, but then the sun goes and does that and makes it very, very difficult. So yes, the reading like my subscribers challenge, cutting down my physical TBR and reading books as they come into me are three of my reading goals for 2024. Question number four, share three of your most anticipated titles. So definitely House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. Although when I'm going to get to that, I have no idea, but this is definitely an anticipated release. Also, of course, Abby Jimenez's newest release just for the summer. I am absolutely hyped to read her next book. And then of course, Riley Sager's newest release, Middle of the Night. I'm so excited for the newest release likely coming out in June. So those are three of the titles that I'm hyped for. But I did again also do a video on some of my most anticipated releases for 2024. And again, I will try to remember to leave that linked down below in case you are interested. Question number five, which goals did you reach or not reach last year? And I really think that I did a good job of meeting or almost meeting all of the goals. Again, a goal recap was featured in the goal video that I made during Bookmas. So all of that information was contained in that video. But I really feel like I did a great job of meeting the goals that I set for myself because I never let them stray too far from my mind. My entire reading year was dedicated to those goals. And so some of them have been extended into 2024, like the reading books as they come into me. And some of them, I feel like I did a fantastic job of satisfying, like the completion of series. I definitely hope to continue that in 2024 as well, especially since I still have a handful of series and only have like one book left that I either need to read to finish the series or catch up in the series. So I definitely do hope to do that in 2024. So ultimately, I feel like I was very successful in my reading goals, and I'm hoping to continue that progress in 2024. Question number six, are there 2023 releases that you've heard of but have no interest in reading? And yes, absolutely. There were a ton of releases that came out in 2023 that I had no interest in reading. Off the top of my head, the ones that I can think of were Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune, and The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. Those are some of the bigger releases in 2023 that I have no interest in reading and will not be reading. Unless, of course, it ends up becoming part of my read like my subscribers project, but so far none of those books have been recommended. So I'm safe. Question number seven, what are some reading habits you want to change this year, if any? So for the most part, I think I've gotten a pretty good handle on my reading habits. I'm pretty proud of the progress that I've made as a reader over the past couple of years. Again, some of those I just really want to continue, like really watching what I'm buying, being very intentional and mindful about the books that I'm bringing into my home. But one thing I definitely want to still continue to work on is not continuing a series unless I'm absolutely crazy about it and super excited to read it. I realized when I was like making the video all about the series that I'm in the middle of and the series that I DNF'd and stuff like that, that some of those series that I ultimately ended up DNFing were series that I was never excited about to begin with and I should never have continued with them or said that I was going to continue with them. So I really just want to be very, very mindful about starting series and continuing series. So if there's a series on my radar that I've been wanting to start and I read the first book and I'm only just meh about it, even if it's only a duology and there's only one other book that I need to read to complete it, I really just need to not waste my time on it because there's not enough time in the world to read all the books that I want to read and I do not need to be wasting my time with meh books and that's just kind of how I feel about my TBR in general. I routinely go through my physical and my virtual TBR and make sure that there's no books on there that I feel meh about or that I don't really feel very happy about reading or excited about reading and I make sure that those are no longer there because I don't want to waste my time with those books. So I definitely want to be sure that I'm always reading just books that I'm super excited about reading unless of course it's for the reading like my subscribers project which is definitely meant to kind of push me outside of my comfort zone and make me understand y'all a little bit better. Also another reading habit that I would really like to cultivate is really taking the time to sit down and read. I've mentioned this multiple times on my channel, but since I've been an adult, my concentration has been absolutely shot. It's one of the reasons why I can't sit down and just physically read on my own more often. It's why the vast majority of the things that I read, I listen to via audio. And the only things that I really ever take the time to sit down and read are fantasies. So I'll sit down and read them because I like to tab up the books for context. And I really like to sink my teeth into them and make it a real reading experience. And I really want to make sure that I have a chunky fantasy going throughout the year. I want to make sure that I'm constantly making myself sit down and read no matter what is going on in my life. I definitely tend to push that aside, especially when I'm very busy at work or if I'm stressed out, like especially if I'm in grad school. It's almost impossible for me to want to actually sit down and concentrate on a book, but I really want to make sure that I'm making progress on all of these wonderful fantasy series that I'm starting or I'm in the process of, and I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm not reading those fantasies. This is especially true because again, I am subscribed to Fairy Loot and those books are just going to keep coming to me once a month. And if I'm not reading the ones that I actually want to read, those are
are just going to build up and build up and build up and they're not going to get read and it's a pointless subscription. So that is definitely something that I want to cultivate in 2024. I've also said this before, but I cannot read to relax. I have to be relaxed to read. I can't really have anything else on my mind or anything else pertinent that I feel like needs to be done. And so of course that makes it very, very difficult for me to sit down and read, but I'm going to do my best to do that in 2024. Question number eight, are there any adaptations that you are excited about? And to my knowledge, no, I could be wrong, but I didn't research this question beforehand. So I didn't look up any 2024 adaptations that were coming out. So I'll have to keep my eye on that to see. But to be honest with you, I'm terrible about watching adaptations either because one, I just really don't care that much or two, I'm too nervous to watch the adaptations. Like if some of my favorite books are being adapted, I'm far more likely to be terrified of that adaptation and never watch it. Please comment down below and let me know of any adaptations that are coming out in 2024 that you are excited for and maybe I'll put them on my radar. But in just in general, I'm bad about watching things. I don't really watch movies and I don't watch a ton of TV. So the adaptations likely wouldn't even get watched even if I was excited about them. Question number nine, favorite bookish memory of last year. And I would say my favorite bookish memory is just starting sprints and kind of building up a fun little community with my weekly reading sprints. I have a pretty fun gang of people that come to my sprints every single week. And now we are in a discord together where we chit chat every now and then and we get to share pictures and things that are going on in our lives. And I'm just kind of really proud of that. And I'm hoping to grow it and build it in 2024. I typically do all day reading sprints on Sundays starting at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, barring anything unexpected or unless the times are super crazy and I really need Sundays to like buckle down and get things done. I'm hoping to have them almost every single Sunday in 2024. So I hope to see you there. That was definitely one of my favorite bookish memories from last year. And then of course I actually met one of my subscribers slash sprinters. I met Jared at the Ren Fair Louisiana, which was a bunch of fun as well. So I'm just loving the community that we're building here. It is so phenomenal. And I just hope to continue that in 2024. And then the very final question is question 10, carryovers from last year that you still plan on finishing? And the answer to this question is probably always going to be no. I never like to carry over absolutely anything into a new year. Obviously, sometimes that cannot be helped, but books can absolutely be helped. So if there was something that I started in 2023 that I hadn't finished, I would absolutely make it 100% a priority to finish that before carrying it over in 2024. No, I don't have any books that I'm carrying over into 2024. I'm going to start fresh next year. All right, everybody, that is it. That was the January book tag. If you have not done this tag before, please feel free to do it and tag me in it so that I can see the video that you made. I absolutely love this tag. I think it's a great way to start the year and I would love to see y'all's answers or down in the comments below. Let me know what your first read of 2024 is going to be. I would love to know. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a fireworks emoji in honor of the new year. Y'all know that I love your comments. I love seeing them. I absolutely appreciate and adore the engagement and it just helps my channel so very much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week. Mostly I do too, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.